This is part two of the preferences to know in Reaper. The next preference I want to show you is on the media item defaults. In a future video, I'm going to show you about these for cutting out clicks and pops. So we'll get to that later. But for now, I want to show you this down here, which chooses to loop our source automatically when we import items, whether it be audio, MIDI items, or for recorded items. Right now, with these all turned off, if I bring in a loop, let's delete this. Let's say I bring in this loop right here, this drum loop. By default, this isn't going to loop. So if I drag it out, it basically plays nothing afterwards. Now we could change that by going to item properties and choosing loop source right here. So now if we drag it out, it keeps looping. As far as we drag it out, each one of these is another loop. But that's a pain to do it if we know we want to loop these items every time. So let's undo that. And instead, let's delete it, go back to our preferences, and choose loop source for imported items. So anything we import is going to loop automatically like audio files, or this drum loop. Bring it right in, we can automatically loop it. On both sides, too. Earlier or later. And we can do that for MIDI items or anything we record, as long as we choose it here beforehand. Now, if we go to the Audio tab right here, this one's kind of important. Down over here, we can protect our speakers by choosing automatic muting. Right now it's turned off, so our tracks aren't gonna mute automatically if the level gets too hot. But if we choose this, we can choose to mute the master track if the level gets too hot, like plus 18. So if something is feeding back, it's gonna hit the master track and go to your speakers. So if it goes to plus 18 or above, it's gonna mute the master track automatically saving your speakers. So it's definitely a good thing to use. You could also choose to do it on individual tracks. So it'll automatically mute any track that goes above plus 18, which again is way too hot. So that should never happen under normal circumstances. This option is better if you're using a console where individual tracks are going out of your audio interface. If you're doing everything in the box or in the computer, you could just choose this option. But it's definitely worth using, and it doesn't affect the sound, but it will protect your speakers. The next option I want to show you is down here, channel naming or mapping. Here's where we can name our inputs. Now this is very useful for keeping track of your mic inputs, or direct inputs, or any inputs on your audio interface. So you turn these on, for your inputs, choose this, and all the inputs show up. You can create new ones right here. Choose where they're connected. Say input 14. Label what it is. Let's say it's a base DI. And then it shows up right here. This way you don't have to remember where you plug your bass in. Hit OK. Create a new track. If you go to your input, it shows up right here. Making it much easier to find where your bass is. Now the best part of this is that we can save it. So if you set it up for drums in a certain way, when you're done with it, hit save and save it as a map, say your drum map. And then later on, save another one for piano or for acoustic guitar and vocals or whatever you're using. Because obviously you're going to move your mics around depending on what you're recording. And you can always bring it back in by hitting load. Reload your map, and everything's labeled exactly how it's plugged in. Now this works for inputs, but it also works for your outputs right here. Main outputs, outputs to reverbs, maybe headphones, whatever output you're using on your audio interface can be labeled right here. And it's going to vary depending on how many inputs and outputs are on your audio interface. 
But either way, it's much quicker and easier to label them. And we'll do that right from here. So that's the audio tab. Next, we're going to check out the seeking tab. Right here. Here's where we can decide how we seek or where we place the edit cursor. There's a few options here. Top ruler, empty areas of tracks, empty area below tracks. If we choose these as they're chosen now, every time we click any of them, our playhead's going to move to where we place it, and it's going to replay from there, or reseek. For instance, top ruler. If we hit OK, let's move over a bit. If this is playing, and I hit the top ruler over here, it replays from over there. So we can constantly seek as we click. If this was turned off, it wouldn't work that way. Clicking up here would move the edit cursor, but it wouldn't reseek or restart playing from there. It just changes the edit cursor which is good for editing on the fly. But there's other options to choose from. Like empty areas of tracks. If this is not chosen, if I click over here, it doesn't reseek or start again. But if we choose this, now it does. Just jumping around, replays from that point which is really just a matter of preference. If you like to reseek all the time, choose these options. We could also choose empty area below tracks, which is down here. Let's delete this one. Any area down here is the empty area below tracks. So if we click over here, it starts replaying. The point of this is to choose them how you want to work. So you could turn this one off. And now we can reset the edit cursor without it reseeking by clicking down here, but not up here. Here it's going to reseek. And the same with up here. It's really just a matter of preference, but it'll throw you as a new user if you don't realize what's happening, as you think you have no choice but to have it start playing again every time you click somewhere, because we do have that option. You could choose it right here. Now we could also choose it when we're creating loops. Right now with it turned off, if it's playing and I create a loop right here, it doesn't start replaying it. So this makes sense for editing while the song's playing. We don't want the edit cursor to keep jumping around if we just want to try editing things. Copy in this section or this section. It'll keep playing while we do that. But sometimes we want to hear that change without having to stop and playing it again. So we could choose this option right here. Seek on loop point change. Now if we change it, automatically starts playing the top of the loop, making it very easy and quick to hear what we're doing. We could also make it happen only when repeat is enabled. So it's only going to seek on loop point change when repeat over here is turned on. We could also choose to have it seek on playback when we move things around, changing the size or fader adjustment, which can be very helpful, again, for hearing the changes. So let's choose this. Let's bring in that loop. Let's mute it, this way I don't hear it. And after we hit play and grab it, it starts replaying it every time we do that, either from the end or the beginning, which is really helpful when we're creating fades. So undo all that. Let's say you want to hear the fade in, and it's playing from over here. Just grab the fade, and it jumps to double check that fade. Adjust it again, and we can quickly hear the fade change. Make it longer, and there's a pre-roll that is set right here, a thousand milliseconds. So every time we make a change to this, 
It jumps back one full second and lets us hear this change. And it works on the end as well. So if we add a fade at the end, every time we change it, we can rehear it. Once again, very helpful and quick for doing changes on the fly and hearing the result. But it's an option, so we could turn them off just as easily. So that's seeking. Let's move on to part three of the preferences to know in Reaper. Mm -hmm. 